All right, y'all, what's good? It's your boy, BQ, Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. Sorry about the cat there. Slammiversary, over, in the books. Great show. Uh, Hard to Kill is still my favorite pay-per-view of 2021. I found this to be better than Rebellion. I think I gave Rebellion like a B plus. Uh, I give Slammiversary an A-. minus. Uh, I, I think it was kind of a two-match pay-per-view. Uh, not to say anything was bad on the card, but it, it had outstanding bookends. Um, I'll put it like that. So uh, I'm going to run really quick through the show, uh, through the results. I'm not going to go into too full of a review. I'll probably do that uh, later in the week, but I wanted to give results. Uh, give you guys, for those of you who didn't see it, an idea who showed up at the pay-per-view. Um, I will say as far as the surprises this year, I thought they were just done more tastefully. I thought they fit better into the flow of the show. They didn't tease anything that didn't happen. You know, like last year, and maybe it was kind of, co you know, COVID related, whatever, um, because, you know, certain things like Aces and Eights they were looking at doing, didn't do. But uh, with that being said, there was a lot last year that just didn't happen that they kind of teased. And then the surprises last year we weren't really surprised. Like they were all things that were heavily rumored with this show. Um, there was just kind of surprises throughout the show, but they, they really meant something and they fit into the flow of the show. Most of these surprises, uh, will probably be around for a couple of matches. Some, not a one off, but you know, we'd be around for a couple set of taping, something like that. A couple of big matches, maybe bound for glory. But I, I think with everyone we saw tonight, I would say two people are probably signed at the company. So, you know, I felt that that was a strong possibility, but let's run through um, the results here real quick. That's what you came here for. And then please leave your thoughts in the comments. This is the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. So if first time here, um, make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, we're going to get a crack in here at the lounge. So Ultimate X was the opener. And as I said, it, this was a show about bookends. For me, it was kind of like a two match pay-per-view and I don't mean anything was bad. It's just like if you follow, you know, sports and they say okay this is a four player draft this is a five player draft something like that that just means you know it's heavy at the top and then it might be solid after that but you get excited about four or five players like with this you got excited about uh two matches and then the rest was 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 good and solid but this ultimate x match they did a lot of stuff i've never seen before that you've probably never seen before they reminded us and they let us know uh, not reminded us because we know as impact fans but they let us know that uh, P.D. Williams is the Canadian destroyer, dude. Like, that's that's why he was in this match, you know, um, uh, to, to really do his thing as far as that goes. I really predicted myself and T.W. both did that Chris Bay and Josh Alexander were going to be the ones kind of hanging out in the end. Um, and that, that is what happened. Josh Alexander did win. But they did a lot of creative stuff. Everybody looked really, really good. If I said anything negative about when this match was announced, uh, because the way they put it together was awful, but... I probably it probably soured me on the match. If I said something negative, I truly uh, apologize because this match was killer. Now we had live fans in the audience. It added a very very different element. I would say it's about 150 people in there. I could be totally wrong, but it was a good amount, you know, of fans. I expected like no joke like 50 VIP people. I, I didn't think there was more um, more there than I truly expected, and they sounded good. They were engaged. This was the most engaged impact audience we've seen in a long time like they were having fun they were they were happy they were glad to be there they were energized they just really really brought it so that was really nice to see but the ultimate ultimate x match josh alexander won i expected him to because i expect him me personally i expect him to be the one to take the title off kenny omega i think they're going to do another title versus title match and that's how they're going to bring the title home um, and that's why kenny omega will be invested in it too so that's just what i think uh, let me know. So the mixed tag team match was after that. Matt Cardona, um, he had a mystery partner uh, versus Brian Myers and Tino Dashwood. We all knew who the mystery partner was going to be. Um, you know, even on Impact, Scott Demore is like, you know, do you have a partner? It's going to be a hot mess. Like Scott, Scott says shit to get himself over, but he really didn't need to do that. But we all knew who the partner was going to be. It was indeed Chelsea Green. She did come out in the as the Laurel Van Ness character and i don't mean the the uh left at the altar bride but towards the end of her her tna run at the time i think um she was more dressed like a competitor like a wrestler she was a knockout champion 
but had the you know the smeared makeup, smeared lips. Like that's how she came out. Her entrance theme and just entrance video and everything was really cool, and uh, it was just a really good dynamic between her and Cardona. And I really thought, even though they booked this match at the last minute, that it was like the best put together match on this whole card, uh, just because it really, really made sense. And uh, you know, the match was what it was. It's what you expected it to be, but. You know, it was just cool seeing uh, her show up um, and show up in a Laurel Van Ness gimmick. That means when she does her thing in, in Ring of Honor, she's she's going to be, you know, more just the, the serious Chelsea Green. So we're going to get two two versions of it, you know, and um, yeah, good shit there. So and then we got Eddie Edwards versus W. Morrissey. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to BS you guys. My uh, my TV accidentally pulled out this, the plug out uh, when I was messing around and I missed the majority of this match. So I just know Morrissey won. That's all I know. But uh, what I did see of the match, I probably saw a good five or six minutes. I was kind of bored, to be totally honest with you. And, you know, Eddie's a guy I love, and I like what they've been doing with Morrissey right now. I was personally bored with the match. I don't know how it ultimately panned out, you know, because I just saw the beginning um, and probably a little bit past that. So I don't know if they hit that next gear or not. I don't even know how the match ended, but W. Morrissey did win. Then there was a little... Uh, you call it a vignette, if you will. Didn't show any faces. It was just a cardboard, a uh, piece of cardboard, and uh, the names drum. The name Drama King was written on there in marker, like in fast forward. Uh, I don't know if it said. It, I think it said something else, but for me, that is the artist formerly known as Aiden English. That's who that should be. He was released over a year ago. If it is him, which I'm pretty sure it is, I'm, I'm interested to see what he can do in this gimmick. Uh, I never saw him. On Smack, I think it was just on SmackDown. I never saw that character, but I did see the VOD villains thing because I was a big NXT fan when it. Sorry, my recording cut out there, but I was saying I was a big fan in NXT when it was um, of the VOD villains when when NXT was a developmental company. Not you know once they turned it a third brand, I wasn't really interested in it. Uh, next after that though um, was probably the worst part of the show, in my opinion. It was it was, but uh, Shira and Madman Fulton came out. They were banned from ringside for Ultimate X, and. Um, they, they laid the groundwork that they were the secret weapons and everything, so it all kind of makes sense. But they were banned. They come out. Scott Demore comes out. He's he's such an annoying on-screen character. I mean, you, you guys want to fight? You guys, hey. Um, he annoys the piss out of me on TV. But uh, he, you know, he lets them know they're going to have a match, and it's with Finju. So Finju's returns. You know, they're pretty well received by the crowd. I didn't really give a shit. Uh, I, I mean, I figured they were coming back at some point. It wasn't a huge surprise for me uh but um they had a match it was basically a squash match Fulton and, and Shearer were made to look like fools uh so I, I wasn't a big fan of it and it was just it was the worst part of the show after that we had uh Moose versus Chris Saban and uh at first I didn't think this match was going to get to second gear and then it did but uh you know Moose came out looking like a star he's he dude's a star uh, but it did get to that second gear and it was similar to the Rich Swan match which I expected it would be which is my favorite match an impact in a long time. This wasn't quite as good in my opinion, but uh, it was still excellent. Moose really, really brought it. There's some good storytelling. Moose surprisingly lost this match. Chris Saban won with a victory roll. Uh, didn't see that one coming at all. I don't think anyone predicted that Chris Saban would actually win this match. Uh, the build to this match was horrible, um, but the match itself was good. I don't. At first, I didn't understand why did Chris Saban win. Moose, well, Moose is a fucking star, whether he wins or loses, and Moose usually wins all his matches, so it's not you know, not the end of the world. When we see it after the main event what happened, then it made sense, okay, this is why Chris Saban won, so we'll get to that here in a little bit. And then it was the four-way tag team match. You know what I didn't talk about was the, uh, the pre-show, mainly because I didn't see the match. I don't even know how it was broadcast, because I looked on Fight TV and nothing ever popped up, but it was Decay, Havoc, and Rosemary against Fire and Flava, and uh, we do have new Knockouts Tag Team Champions. So uh, that's that. So they did they did to cut a uh, cut a promos decay and havoc looked good within the group. They all matching clothes and all that. I really dig that within fact within tag teams. You know matching colors. They all look good. Uh, good promo there. So sorry I didn't mention that a little bit earlier. Uh, but four way tag team match for the Impact Tag Team Championships. Uh, we had the Good Brothers versus uh, Willie Mack and Rich Swan versus Falaba and the debuting No Way. Uh, formerly known as No Way Jose, and then Violent by Design, who was the champions. Who, let's face it, these guys were always uh, placeholder tag team champions. And, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoyed the match for quite a, uh, what it was. When No Way came out, and it was the way Falaba introduced them was really good. 
you know, he's not the biggest star in the world. He was released last year along with Aiden English. Not the biggest star in the world, but uh, he really added an element to the show that I haven't seen in Impact in a long time. Just a very fun element, very lively element. And I'm a big fan of Rich Swan's entrance and his music and everything, but, you know, this with the conga line and, you know, then Swan and Mac were dancing with him, you know, <laughs> then Johnny, Johnny Bravo absolutely destroyed me <laughs> when he was coming out dancing. Uh, but, you know, Swinger and Alicia was out there, probably the Swingerellas, who knows. But um, I, I really thought he added a different element that we just haven't seen. Impact's been so, like, depressing, the show, the way, you know. And, you know, I want to say the yellow ropes and the ring setup, everything was gorgeous. It looked it looked great. Uh, you guys know I'm a, not a big fan of that all-red setup that they do. Uh, th- this, was, this was nice. Um, it was very easy to just enjoy the show watch the matches but uh, the good brothers did win as expected you know i think they want to have uh the titles back on AEW, and then you know the young bucks got their titles kenny omega so they're all they're all dripped in gold you know what i mean so uh not no shocker here i would have liked to see rich swan and willie mack win but i knew that probably wasn't likely after that is diana perrazzo uh with her not an open challenge she just had a surprise opponent uh defending her knockouts championship this one, TW called this one. I really didn't see it coming. I didn't think it was a possibility. I was going with Kylie Ray, and then Tessa Blanchard was my other option. Uh, but it was Thunder Rosa. Like, did not see this coming at all. The music hit, and it was kind of, no one knew who it was. And then you saw the Thunder Rosa pop up on the screen, and everyone went nuts. She came out. The match, maybe I got to watch it again, folks. This match was okay to me. I thought we were going to get a, a classic once I knew she was coming out. It never got to that next gear for me. And, you know, at one point I, I turned to talk to my fiance and I turned back and the match was over. I mean, so so she hit that pile driver. I forgot what she calls it. Just out of nowhere. And the match was over. And I was like, wow, okay. You know, like I just never got excited about the, what they were doing. But I was I enjoyed it at the same time because I'm a big fan of both girls. And Thunder Rosa's amazing. She's phenomenal. Incredible. Mickey James comes out after, and uh, she looked amazing. Whew. Uh, she she just looked really good. She came out uh, a little harder here at first, but she said that she was basically personally inviting Deanna for the uh, NWA Empower. I will actually be in St. Louis for NWA Empower. That is local to me. It's only 30 minutes. I, I work in St. Louis, so uh, I will be there for that pay-per-view. I hope Deanna Perrazzo is there as well so i'm excited about the possibilities there um and then you know she, but but she however pretty much denied doing it um they punch each other push each other whatever it was uh mick james delivers the mitt kick and hardcore country in the place to be so i'm not sure i'm expecting mickey james to wrestle an impact or anything like that maybe there's a stipulation where she beats her she has to do show who knows i, I doubt it but um uh, like the groundwork that they put, and it means there's a little bit of work and relationship are there with NWA, with Thunder Rosa and Mickey James there, so that is a that is a good thing. Uh, they announced that Bound for Glory is going to be in Las Vegas, my future home. Um, so I'm going to do my best to show up for that. Nashville's actually four hours from me, but I just um, <laughs> wasn't in the cards for me to make it to the show. Uh, Bound for Glory, I'm going to try to make it to, and uh, they did show. Graphics for AEW, AAA, and uh, New Japan. So, uh, might as well throw NWA in there in, in, in the hat too. If you're already working with them, so Ring of Honor looks like they're they're really late to the party with this whole thing. But um, but yeah, but Diana Prazo did win the match. Uh, I guess I didn't really make that clear. She won the match again. It was it was pretty decent to me. I, I really expected to, them to really go at it, uh, but that wasn't the case. Uh, main event. Again, like I said, for the Ultimate X, I take back anything bad I say about this stipulation, the no DQ stipulation. Yeah, there was some kind of little bit of fuckery, but it, it all made sense within the, the flow of the match. It was nothing uh, nothing that, that that didn't make sense. Um, you know, the night, the forks, the pizza cutters, and everything. I mean, this was like a real hardcore match. So in this case, I was cool with it. I was very worried that it was, you know, stop signs and wet floor signs and things like that. That was my concern. But you know what? Impact kills it for main events, so I really shouldn't have doubted it. But I take back anything I negative, I, ne- anything negative I said about that gimmick because, uh, or the stipulation, because 
they killed it. They delivered 100%. The match was a blast. Uh, it, it, it had something that the Rich Swan match didn't have. Where with Rich Swan, um, I was more emotionally invested into that because I really wanted Swan to win. But at no point during the match did it feel like Swan was going to win. Uh, that was where it was different with this match, and then with the Moose match too. Like there was there was moments where you felt like they were going to win, you just didn't really expect them to. But um, th- this was good stuff. Uh, when they had the run in with the Good Brothers, when they tried to run in, and then Chris Saban and Eddie Edwards came out. I was like, that's why Chris Saban won because they're going to team him and Eddie Edwards up, um, and they'll feud with the Good Brothers because I mean, face it, Impact's tag team division is horrendous. Uh, they got no one to face the Good Brothers, so this makes a lot of sense. I don't think they'll they'll beat them, but it's a good Bound for Glory match. With that being said, they'll probably wrestle the Good Brothers on the next episode of Impact because they, they really rush things. But I would really take my time with that and um, really build out, stretch it out to BFG if you can. Most likely that's not what's going to happen because, well, I know that's not what's going to happen because Eddie Edwards will probably be the, the uh, challenger of Bound for Glory. So this lays the groundwork to where Eddie lost the match, Chris Saban won the match. Like One of them had to win tonight. But this lays the groundwork to where you're, it's not obvious Eddie's going to challenge next, just like uh, Sammy Callahan was very obvious that he was going to challenge next. I don't know that it's going to be Eddie Edwards. I'm fairly confident it's going to be, though. So this throws people off the scent a little bit. It allows them to feud with the Good Brothers in a high-profile feud, and then he can branch off from that to Kenny Omega. So to me, that makes a lot of sense, and I think that's 100% what we'll get at BFG, uh, but just the fact that they had a little run and just tells us that there's there's going to be a feud and Saban had to win because Eddie lost. You know they couldn't have two losers trot out, <laughs> go out there and trot. You know trot out gets the tag team champions, and then the lights go out after the match after Kenny and Mega wins it. Uh, but this match was killer. It was absolutely phenomenal. The lights go out and Jay White comes out, <laughs> and the, you know they're going to do the biz cl- biz thing, and. Uh, we, we don't know how Jay White was going to respond yet. And then they cut out. So that was really, really well done. With all these surprises, though, we can expect probably, um, you know, Aiden English, if it is him, and No Way Jose to probably stick around. And I think we're going to get some more debuts. Because like last year, they did Brian Myers, his vignette on Impact. I think we're going to see stuff like that uh, going forward. But all the other stuff, I think, is more working relationship stuff and some one-off stuff. We'll see what happens with Chelsea Green. You know, maybe she's just going to do the ROH thing and then return to Impact and stay. Who knows? Or she's going to do the... I would imagine she's going to do the, the freelance... Just the, the freelancing, showing up at other companies thing. I think that's absolutely 100% what she's going to do. But she should be in Impact for a little bit. And I'm glad she's doing the, the Laurel Van S gimmick. So that's going to do it for me. That is... Uh, my rundown of Bound for Glory. Make sure you subscribe. If it's your first time here, I am the number one place. This is the number one place, and I am the number one guy talking Impact Wrestling. So uh, thanks for swinging, boy. I need to get to bed, folks. Thanks for swinging, boy. Bye. I'm your boy, BQ, and I'm out. Peace.